So I've been covering the Call of Duty franchise for over half a decade at this point is part of my professional career as a games journalist and reviewer. And, you know, each iteration has brought something new to the table in the sense of something that I felt was, you know, worthwhile. But at the same time, there's a lot that I just felt was just, and eh, you're not really progressing the formula for it. And for a bit, I want to say that coming off of like Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and the Black Ops series, I feel like Call of Duty kind of lost its way. We got into Advanced Warfare, we got uh, a couple other games, we went back to World War II, and nothing quite really caught on. Until 2019's Call of Duty Modern Warfare Reboot. That one really brought in a lot of people that, you know, a lot of the lapsed Call of Duty fans. And so what happened with that was it ended on a cliffhanger, and you didn't know at the time if that was a prequel to the original Modern Warfare game or if it was you know, a reboot. But now in 2022 with the new Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, which is, you know, the second of that title, they made it clear that it's now a reboot. And so, hey, that's what we're here to talk about. Whether this reboot lives up to the legacy of 2009's Call of Duty Modern Warfare, or if it's just playing it too safe and just play on our nostalgia. And before we dive into that, one of the things I want to do is I want to give a special thank you and mahalo to Activision Blizzard for providing a review copy of this game. I played this on the PlayStation 5 and I've had a lot of fun with it. It has been something I really enjoyed and I ended up liking it so much that I picked it up on PC too. I'm excited to dive into this. So we're going to talk about in this review whether the game is any good, if you should pick it up, the graphics and all that in between. So before we do all that, make sure you like the video, sub to the channel if you enjoy the content I put out and the notification bell. And uh, if you want to pick up a copy of the game, links will be down in the description down below. So before we kick this video off, I want to just let you guys know that all the footage for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 was captured using the Live Game Extreme 3. This device is really amazing because it's such a tiny device that can easily slot into your setup, like whether you're streaming, podcasting, recording gameplay footage, or what have you. You can even use this and connect it to your DSLR camera, and boom, you got yourself a webcam. This device is super easy, allows for 4K60 pass through with HDR with 4K30 capture as well as doing 1440p and it can also do 1080p at 60 frames per second as well as having a variable refresh rate. So if you want to play your game on one monitor to capture and play on another and utilize variable refresh rates, you can have that more seamless feel as you play because hey, you might be one of those people that likes to play with your DPI set really high. That's me. So this allows you to play the way you want and capture your content the way you want. If you want to pick one of these up, you can go and get this over on the Amazon page for Aver Media. I'll leave a link down in the description below. You can't go wrong with this. Hey, if you pick it up, just tell them Mikhail Casanova sent you. Get yours today. All that being said, let's go ahead and get into this review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Picking up three years after the events of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, Modern Warfare 2 puts us in the shoes of various members of Task Force 141 as they contend with the threat of Hassan Ziani, who is seeking vengeance against the United States after an airstrike kills al Qatal leader General Gobrani and goes on to form an alliance with an international drug cartel that has stolen U.S. ballistic missiles. Hassan is planning to launch the missiles against various targets of the U.S., and it falls to the team of Task Force 141 to stop him in a globe-trotting affair. While it may seem that 2022's Modern Warfare 2 is a retelling of 2009's Modern Warfare 2, they are not at all the same story nor set in the same universe. This is a reboot of the same characters, that effectively are just in a new environment. Modern Warfare 2 brings back Farah Kareem from Modern Warfare 2019, who comes back as an ally for one of the missions you'll be on. However, she doesn't play much of a role in the overall story, which is a bit odd considering her previous teaming up with Captain John Price, which feels like a missed opportunity. One of my favorite new characters is none other than Alejandro, as he is honestly that friend that we all have who can seem grimy but has a heart of gold is always there when you need them. Rodolfo really shines as well as he balances out Alejandro's nature, and they are both, you know, like so well portrayed that you end up growing attached to them. All in all, story-wise, Modern Warfare 2 does a fantastic job of balancing out nostalgia and weaving its own new plot with a fun and engaging narrative. 
Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 features 17 campaign missions that give you that cinematic action that you've come to know from the franchise, with you having some stealth sections to round it out as well. What I noticed is that there will be some missions that will harken back to the original Modern Warfare games, such as how Recon by Fire is reminiscent of All Gillied Up, and Close Air is similar to Death from Above. And, you know, for example, in Close Air, you get to take control of one of the members of the Shadow Company that's in an AC-130 gunship providing air support for Soap, Ghost, and Alejandro. And it just gives you that exhilarating feeling that you get from, you know, the fan favorite Death from Above in Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Most of the missions will give you some freedom of how you want to play, which isn't entirely new per se, as we've experienced that in games previously. Yet in Modern Warfare 2, you're giving some expanded options that give you some additional options for how you want to approach missions, such as going in with direct guns blazing tactics or by stealthy means, and not taking out anyone. There are even sections where you must snipe some targets and have the option to explore the area and find a position to set up your line of shot. There are also occasional segments that can feel like you're in an open world environment, but I wouldn't say that the freedom of how you execute missions is on the level of an open world RPG shooter like uh, Fallout, for example, but it's still cool for what it is. The game plays like a traditional Call of Duty experience, so you already know how in many respects how it controls, and yet there are some newer aspects of the game such as new mechanics for maneuvering around, such as being able to stand on the roof of a vehicle to jump over and hijack an enemy's vehicle, as well as being able to quickly switch seats around whatever car you're in and more. Playing the game on the PlayStation 5 had the game utilizing the dual senses, haptic triggers, and feedback, giving the game some added sense of realism when it comes to having the added tension from ADS or aiming down sights and popping off a few rounds. There is also a new crafting mechanic introduced in the later portion of the game that, you know, it's pretty neat, although it's a bit unnecessary for the series. I will say that the game felt substantially harder than any of the previous Call of Duty games of recent memory, especially on the normal difficulty, as I found myself getting killed constantly since the AI is much more ruthless than in previous games. The increased ruthlessness from the AI made me have to change up my tactics and never feel like I'm comfortable or safe in skirmishes given how much faster and realistic they react to everything. I'm going to combine the graphics and audio sections here as you can't really separate them from one another. So on the PlayStation 5, the game looks incredible and sounds incredible too, with in-game graphics that look so good that they just draw you in, especially when it comes to the various locales all over the world that you end up traveling to. The pre-render cutscenes look even better and at times look so realistic that you'll have to stop and question if you can reach out and touch these characters as it can feel like they were filmed with real life people and not pre-render cutscenes. The returning cast of Captain John Price, Soap McTavish, and Ghost all look incredible and the performances of the motion capture team and voice actors brings them to life in a way that we've never gotten to experience before. The entire cast nails the roles of this game and let's not forget about the sound team either as everything in this game from the gunshots, explosions, vehicles, babbling brooks of water, flora and fauna and more all sound outstanding. The OST itself is bombastic and reminds me of the days of great movies like Black Hawk Down and The Sum of All Fears and how it all feels like a Hollywood movie. It's really that good. As far as the downsides go, I would say that the game doesn't have many within the campaign, other than the occasional graphical hiccups here and there. There were times when enemies would teleport through doors, or when killed would phase through walls and other issues like that, but you know, I also saw that there were texture pop in and occasional instances where in missions like close air, where when I would zoom in to provide air support, the textures like trees and such would change textures when I would zoom in and out. It was, you know, Odd. And other issues were when the game was fully installed, I was stuck on a loop of the game telling me to install the campaign when I had already done so. And it would prompt me to purchase another edition of the game, which was, again, strange. The solution to that was just to uninstall the single player campaign and launch the game and allow it to install it for you with the game running. 
it was annoying, yes, to have to deal with that, but hey, it, at least it was resolved. All in all, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019 was a great return to form for the franchise and was excellent in its story and presentation and was just a fun game that I can still go back to. And now Modern Warfare 2 takes a crown from that entry and even the 2009 entry for me is now one of my favorite games of the year. From excellent graphics, outstanding audio, fun gameplay and new mechanics, and a bombastic story, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 is a must play, if for nothing more than the campaign alone, as it's just that good. And that's it, that's the review for Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. Again, thank you and mahalo to Activision Blizzard for providing a review copy of this game. I really had a lot of fun playing this and you know what I can't wait to dive into the multiplayer aspect because that's probably going to be the next thing I review but what do you guys think have you played Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 are you thinking about picking it up and if so what platform are you going to pick it up on why don't you let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below and if you enjoyed this video make sure you like it sub to the channel and ding the notification bell that way you can stay up to date on all the latest and greatest content that comes from this channel and with that I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you guys have a safe, blessed, and aloha rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. So, later.